Are you sick of VORs? Neither are we. Let's warm up our VOR skills by practicing an old school VOR approach. We're flying to the north of Paducah Airport in Kentucky. Let's just say we're on a random radar vector here flying roughly southeastbound. The Cunningham VOR is just southwest of the airport, so Paducah has a VOR approach into runway 5. We can overlay the approach plate onto our chart, and let's also bring back the profile view with the minimum section. Our instruments show us at 3,000 feet on a Battle 120 heading. Let's say ATC or our instructor tells us to turn right direct Cunningham cleared VOR runway 5 approach. First thing we need to do is find out from our VOR what course will take us into the station. With the nav properly tuned to the station, we twist the OBS until the needle centers with a 2 indication showing us a 190 course will take us direct to Cunningham, so we turn to that heading. As we fly inbound, we keep the needle centered by chasing it and making wind corrections if necessary. The needle will swing out, and as we overfly the station, the flag will disappear. This is how we know we've arrived at Cunningham. This is time for our five T's. Turn. We're going to turn outbound along the approach. It's the 222 radial, so we're going to turn to that heading using a standard rate turn. Time. We're not going for any specific time on this leg, but the profile view tells us that we need to stay within 10 miles of the VOR as we do our course reversal. So depending on our ground speed, that'll equal a certain amount of time. Let's say we want to go 5 miles outbound before starting the course reversal. At 100 knots ground speed, that's 3 minutes. Twist. We twist the OBS, but to what course? We're going to be flying outbound on a 222 heading, but we're not following any guidance here. We're just getting set up for a course reversal, so there's no need to stay right on that 222 radial. It's better to just set the inbound course as 042, which we'll need to navigate along the actual approach course. So we're ready to fly outbound and do the procedure turn. Let's bring up an aircraft symbol on our profile view as well. Now that we're past the VOR, we can descend to 2100, the procedure turn altitude. When we decide we're far enough out, we can start the course reversal first turning to 177 degrees, then after one minute, turning right to 357 degrees. Once the needle comes in and we re-intercept the course, we turn to 042. Now that we're established inbound, we can leave the procedure turn altitude of 2100 feet and go down to 1700, which is where we'll be at the final approach fix, the VOR station. From the VOR, we're going to be configuring for the approach and going down to the MDA of 860 feet. If we have DME, we can identify the missed approach point, 3.8 DME, as well as the visual descent point, 2.6. But without it, we'll need to do a timed approach. The plate shows us time from the FAF to the map based on ground speeds. So if our approach is 90 knots, it'll take 2 minutes 32 to get to the map. If we don't see the runway by then, we'll go missed. We pass over the station. When the flag flips, we start down and begin timing. We level at 900 for a buffer, and when we gain visual of the runway, proceed for a landing. So there it is, the vaunted VOR approach in as small of a nutshell as we can manage. Watch this again a few times to get it down pat, and go check out our courses at the Flight Insight website linked here or in the description today.